What is going on guys, it's Mudge Dwarf here. Welcome back to another PS4 tutorial. So in this one, we're going to be taking a look at the Gamepad Helper plugin by Joe Cover for Gold Hen. So this is a new plugin, relatively new plugin. It was released a couple of weeks ago that will allow you to customize your PS4 controller for any game or homebrew app or any app, I guess, on your PS4. So for example, you've got a couple of features here that are pretty handy. You've got the custom dead zone settings. So if you have, you know, stick drift on one of your sticks on the controller, then this can fix it for you by increasing the dead zone to eliminate that stick drift, as well as also decreasing the dead zone. If you have some kind of custom controller that has more accurate sticks, then you could also decrease the dead zone as well. That is also an option, as well as custom touchpad buttons. So this is pretty interesting. This will treat the touchpad, each corner of the touchpad as a separate button and therefore you can bind it to do different things. And speaking of binding things, you can also bind every button on the controller as well. So you have complete button mapping available for any title. So you can specify different button binds for each game that you want to play. So of course, if there's any game or even emulator or homebrew app or something where you don't like the current button binds, you can swap them out here uh, for that particular app. Uh, or of course, games that have you know not very many options for changing your button layout then you can specify exactly the layout that you want with this plugin. So very useful features there as well. It also has some vibration settings too, so you can adjust the vibration settings so it can be weak, medium or strong or off completely. Whereas again, some games will only allow you to have vibration on or off. Uh, it doesn't give you as, as good controls. Whereas with this, you have finer grade controls for the vibration as well. It is misspelled for some reason, it's vibration intensity. Even in the code, it's spelt as vibration intensity, but it is vibration that it's talking about there. So four options there, dead zone settings, touchpad button, custom button mappings, as well as custom vibration settings as well. So I'm going to show you guys how to get this plugin set up. There's also another plugin that was released around the same time, uh, which is to force a 1080p display. Not entirely sure what this is particularly useful for because you can just set your resolution to 1080p anyway in the settings. So just as an example, I'm going to do this on Bloodborne, where currently circle is the button for diving, uh, kind of a diving roll. Then that is circle and then X is the interact button. So you press X to interact with objects in the game. So I'm going to change it so that square is the interact button and X is the kind of dive roll button, because that's what I'm used to from kind of other third person style kind of RPG games. So I'm going to go ahead and do that instead using this plugin. So let's go ahead and try and implement that right here. So I'm going to close out of the game and we're going to install the plugin. So first of all, we're going to head into Gold Hen. We're going to go down to server settings and make sure that you have the FTP server enabled and running on your PS4 right here. And there's the IP address and port number to connect to. So we'll switch back over to our computer and download everything that we need. So firstly, we're going to have to download the plugins. So if we go down here, just download the latest release, which contains all the plugins and the configurations files that are required. So we're going to download that, as you can see right here. You're also going to need an FTP client like FileZilla or WinSCP, or you can copy the files over with a USB drive and a homebrew app like PS4 Explorer. So that's up to you, but I'm going to use FTP because it will be quicker. So if we open up the Gold Hen plugins, you can see we've got a plugins.ini file and a plugins folder. Now, of course, the plugins folder contains all the plugins uh, for Gold Hen. And then the plugins.ini file loads specific plugins. There's only three plugins added in here. AFR plugin, no share watermark and the game patch plugin. I would rather move the AFR plugin into the default section so it runs by default. Uh, rather than it being specified for this, which I think is the playroom. And also what we need to do is add the Gamepad Helper plugin into the plugins list. So if we find Gamepad Helper, and we'll just copy the name of it right here. And we will add it in as one of the default plugins. So make sure you add the proper file path, which is going to be data, gold hen, plugins, and then the plugin name, gamepadhelper.prx. So we're going to enter that, control S to save the file. And then we can copy it over with FTP. So we're going to open FileZilla or WinSCP or some other FTP clients, or you can do FTP with, from within Windows itself from the File Explorer. But I'm going to go ahead and enter the IP address right here of my PS4. 
and then we're going to enter 2121 as the port number quick connect and then we're going to go into the data folder and then the gold hen folder and then in here we're going to add our plugins.ini file and then we're also going to add our plugins folder so you can just drag in the whole plugins folder and if you already have plugins in there you can just tick the box to overwrite them and it will go ahead and copy over all the plugins right there Okay, and as you can see, it's added the 1080p plugin and it's also added in the Gamepad Helper plugin. So that's all added. So next, we need to add in our config file for the actual Gamepad Helper itself. So in order to do that, if we head back here to the GitHub post here, you can see the config file right here. All we're going to do is copy the code and we'll just open up a notepad document and paste it into a notepad document. And then we want to save it as gamepad.ini. So we'll just go ahead and do file save as and we'll save it to our desktop as gamepad.ini, change the file type to all files and click save. And then that is saved there on the desktop, gamepad.ini. Okay, so now we can kind of customize the settings for this plugin. So first of all, you know, you've got your default section, which means, of course, that the settings that you have in the default section will apply to every game that you launch. Whereas the settings that you add to uh, these sections here with the title ID will only apply to that specific title ID. So when you're loading that specific game, it will apply that config. Okay, so we'll get rid of the touchpad settings here because we don't really want to have that set for all games. Also, we've got the dead zone setting. So enable dead zone equals one and then dead zone for the left and right stick. 13 is the default number. So you can increase this number between zero and 128. So a value between 0 and 128, 13 being default. So the more you increase this value, the more you increase the dead zone. And you can keep increasing it for whichever stick has the stick drift until it's fixed. So that's the option right there. I don't have any stick drift on my controller, so I can go ahead and get rid of that as well. And as for the game section, so in my case, it's going to be Bloodborne. So if we take a look back on the console for the title ID of Bloodborne, you can see there that our title ID is 03173. You can get that information, of course, by going into Gold Hen Cheat Settings and showing title ID. So by doing that, you'll be able to get the title ID right there. So 03173. If we switch back over once again to the computer, we're going to go ahead and enter that title ID. So 03173. And again, if you wanted to add another game, you could just copy and paste this and add a different title ID. And then that would apply the config to that title ID as well. So that's up to you. So in my case, not really interested in the vibration settings. We'll just get rid of that. And we'll just have enable custom button equals one. And again, all the settings can be found here. And then again, for, the, for our custom button binds, which is what I'm using here, I need enable custom button set to one which I think it's already set. Yep, enable custom button equals one. And then the buttons that you want to bind. So in my case, I want a button cross, button underscore cross, which is X. I want that to equal button underscore circle. So the current action that circle's doing, I want X to do that action instead. So then in terms of X, which is normally used to interact with things, I'm gonna change that. So I want button underscore square, and I want square button to equal button underscore cross. So now when I press X, it will do the normal circle action, which is dive. And when I press square, it will do the normal cross action, which is to interact. So I now need to replace what square normally does with circle. It can get a bit confusing, but yeah. So button underscore circle needs to equal button underscore square. And there we go. So I've rebound those three buttons right there. So that should do for me. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. So let me just do some other ones, even though I'm not really, you know, wanting to really add any additional stuff. That's fine for me, but we'll go ahead and add some of the other stuff just to just to show you these other settings here. So we'll go ahead and do the touch, the custom touchpad buttons as well. So all we need for that is enable custom touchpad equaling one. So we'll do enable custom touchpad equals one. So we'll do something ridiculous with this. We'll set these buttons and we'll match them to the triggers, which would be a bit ridiculous trying to play Bloodborne using the touchpad. But hey, maybe that's a challenge that some, some speedrunner would be up for. 
um, or someone who's really good at the game, but who knows. So yeah, we'll go ahead and add this. So L1 will equal button underscore L1. And we'll just do the same for all of the other ones as well. So we'll just add this in for all of them. Button underscore R1. Button underscore L2. And button underscore R2. Yeah, so now R1 and L1 can also be done using the touchpad as well, uh, which will be a bit strange, but we'll give it a go anyway. So we'll go ahead and save that. And once we have our custom config done, we can then copy it over to the PS4. We're just going to drag it over to data gold hen folder. Just copy it in there. So there it is, gamepad.ini. And that should pretty much be it. So if we switch back over to the console, we want to make sure we're enabling our gold hen plugins. So if we go into Gold Hen and we go to Plugin Settings, we want to just make sure that Enable Plugins Loader is ticked and then we should be good. So now when we run the game, the plugin should load and we should have our custom bindings. Okay, I can already tell that's working because I had to press Square to select. Uh, that's the only thing with this particular game. The Interact button in-game um, is also the like Select button in the menus, so it doesn't distinguish between the two, uh, which basically means I now have to press Square to select uh, instead of X, but we'll go ahead and continue. Okay, so we loaded back up into the game here and yep, the dive is now bound to X. So I'm pressing X here to dive. And if I try and press X to interact, it says X to inspect, but you know, X is just causing me to dodge. And of course I rebound it to square. So if I press square, we get the interact option right there. And of course, a circle, which used to be the dive, is now rebound to what the square used to be, which, I don't know, is that pulling something out of the inventory or something? But yeah, as you can see, circle now does that instead. So circle's now doing what square used to do. Square is now doing what X used to do, and X is doing what circle used to do. And also, if I try, let's see, I'm going to try the touchpad here. So top right touchpad, I'm going to click top right. <laughs> That's hilarious. Top right touchpad is now set to R1. Is it R1? Yeah, it's R1. So it's set to the same thing as R1. And then we'll do bottom right touchpad, which is like a heavy attack. And then top left touchpad is like, again, grabbing from inventory or something. And then bottom left is another attack. So how about that? You can do all the different attacks with the touchpad instead. Button binds, dead zone fixes, and of course, touchpad button binds as well. And of course, you can do this not just with regular PS4 games, any app this should work with. You could also do it with, again, emulators, specific emulators that don't really give you as fine control for button binds. You can make your own button binds with this plugin and then launch the emulator and have it to your liking. Same thing with homebrew apps. Like maybe you don't like the way that you navigate the menu in the homebrew store or in the PS4 Explorer app or something. And then you could customize the button binds this way uh, if the app itself does not give you those options. So yeah, very useful plugin actually. This kind of floated under my radar. I don't know why I didn't notice it when it came out a couple of weeks ago. I guess because we were busy with the whole Okaji Shadow King stuff. But uh, yeah, still very good plugin. So hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.